This is Tea on the Films. My name is Emmy Green, and I will be reviewing movies that are both new and old, good and bad, classics and cult classics. If you're wondering if you should spend money and time on a specific film, this podcast will provide you with enough information for you to make an informed decision in a concise amount of time without spoilers. Today's review is on the movie Capone, written and directed by Josh Trank, starred by Tom Hardy, Linda Cardinelli, and Matt Dillon. Released in the year 2020, straight to streaming because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, ladies and gents, uh, here's the gossip. This is how I actually stumbled upon this film. I literally had not heard of this movie until I turned on my Apple TV one day and saw saw it as a recent release on iTunes. I had not heard about it beforehand, seen any trailers, any posters, nothing, nada. I don't know why though. Maybe they just didn't go all out in marketing? Nevertheless, it is out and available for people to watch. If you really want to spend the extra money though, here's a thing or two about Al Capone the person. Anybody who knows the bare minimum about Al Capone knows at least one of these three things. He was a king of prohibition, aka he was just a famous bootlegger. He was an infamous gangster, that goes with the bootlegger part. And he lived in Chicago during the 1920s. Maybe if you did a little more research about him as an infamous gangster, you know that he went to Alcatraz when he was sentenced for tax evasion because that was the only thing they could pin him down. But nevertheless, nevertheless, what I'm trying to say is if you stumble upon this movie at random like I did, you might think that this is uh, it's, uh, it's a movie about one of those three things, you know? That is, again, if you're like me and you didn't read the summary because you don't like spoilers. So... Talking about spoilers, let's spill the tea, okay? Now, I'm not going to give you actual spoilers of the movie. I'm just going to read you some Rotten Tomatoes statistics and Rotten Tomatoes reviews that don't give you any spoilers. In Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 41% score in their tomato meter out of 127 reviews. The audience score is 27% from a 505 user ratings. These are some really low scores. I mean, I've seen lower, but... For an Al Capone movie? <laughs> However, I can also sympathize and understand why. I mean, again, very poor marketing. Marketing that resembles maybe uh, the Big Bad Wolf in The Little Red Riding Hood. You know, you, you think you're going to get grandma and in fact you get a hairy old man in drag. Except this time it's flipped. You hope you're going to get the badass man and instead you get a dying old grandma in drag. Nothing against drag queens nor drag kings. They actually are my favorite type of grandparents. What I mean by this is the Al Capone movie just did not sell its brand well. Now, when it comes to the non-spoiling reviews, I'm just going to give you four to make this short. Adam Graham said, it's a trip you'd rather forget. Crystal Lemire says, a baffling misfire. This is just terrible, but exquisitely so, a must be seen. Richard Brody commented, the ghastly contrasts are built into the well-conceived story, but Trank neither trusts it nor rises to the demands of his phantasmagorical ambitions. <sniffs> Sorry, I'm just going to sip some tea here. Ouch, damn. And Joe Morgenstern said, Mr. Hardy does have a few sensationally lurid moments, but the stuff of high drama isn't there. What a waste and what a downer for Mr. Trank. Again, I'm just going to keep sipping this tea. Ah, delicious. Okay, so let's talk about the whole thing. My opinion in the whole thing. Keeping these reviews in mind, let me tell you what I think. Again, without giving any spoilers if I can help it. Going back to Christy Lemire's reviews, because she already done had all hers. Uh, this is a misfire. But overall, it, it, it should be seen, if, especially if you're someone who loves movies. It's a good movie for certain occasions. In my opinion, it is photographed beautifully. And the story touches on a theme about our senior citizens and our mentally disabled that people need to talk about more openly. When you watch it, think about that and understand that this topic is being conveyed through the lens of Al Capone's life. That's going to fix everything for you and you're going to enjoy the movie more. Again, but if you didn't know that, it will catch you by surprise. Um, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> um, the acting craft. Okay, let me give you my opinion on the acting craft. The acting craft was just beautiful. 
the movie was very well casted. I'm not familiar with Tom Hardy's or Matt Dillon's choice of method of acting, or the rest of the cast for that matter, but I can tell you that everybody's acting felt authentic, no emotions were pushed, and the high level of language skills really helped immerse the viewer into the world of the movie. Now, let's talk about the storytelling of the movie. Is it a page turner or not? Like, do you read one page and want to turn it to the next page or do you immediately close the book? In my opinion, this movie had two crumbling building blocks. The marketing, like I already said, and its storytelling. The script is not completely bad. As I mentioned before, the dialogue is compelling and brilliant. But the chain of events was, in my opinion, slow and uneventful for most of the movie. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about the popcorn reviews. So how many pieces of popcorn should I give it? I give it a three popcorn pieces out of five. I appreciate the themes it explores beneath its surface and the efforts of and bravery of telling an unpopular story of Al Capone that no one else has told yet. But if you're like my father-in-law, who is an old-fashioned white veteran who loves war movies, you will hate this film because though it is about one of the world's most famous gangsters and that is appealing for you, it is not about the badass part of his life. Now, availability. Right now, it is available on iTunes and on DVD and Blu-ray. For the time being, it is also available on Amazon Prime. However, we all know how movies change their streaming platforms regularly, so don't quote me on this after it's been a couple of months since the airing of this episode. Now, <clears throat> it is time for the wine after the tea. No tea, no shade, okay? Uh, pour yourself a glass of wine. Let's have a nightcap. And talk about other things about this movie. That We already know the movie has a, a three-point score, in my opinion. Acting is beautiful. Page Turner. Eh. Uh, marketing was crap. and But the movie overall is really good. It's just you need to be in the right frame of mind for it. Now let's talk about something that is more personal to me. The casting of this movie was not very diverse, except for the actors playing the landscapers in Al Capone's property who were just Hispanics. Other than that, it's an all-white cast. You know, and, and the thing about having an all-white cast, I guess, you know, I guess it might be like a period piece, but right now I, I'm Puerto Rican. I don't know if you can tell by my accent. And I have been not privy to some roles because of the color of my skin and my accent and my heritage. <sighs> I think movies from now on and the Oscars thanks to the boycotts um, are doing something about it. But, you know, movies need to be more open to blind casting. I, I, it's just <sighs> telling someone, sorry, you can't be this role, you can't be that role because you're black or because you're Hispanic or because you're Asian or whatever. When are we going to be able to act? Almost never. You know, so just keep that in mind. Now, also, this movie, I watched it sober. Maybe it would have been a lot more fun if I would have been stoned or drunk. But um, just I'll let you decide that on your own because I don't want to see it again. Go ahead and subscribe to this podcast if you want to hear more movie reviews. Also, if there is a movie that you want me to review because either you have not seen it, but you want my opinion before you see it, or you have seen it and you have your own opinions about it and you just want to know my opinions, go ahead and send me an email to tonfilms at gmail.com. Or you can leave me a one-minute voicemail with the link below. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and just leave a comment below. I'll get back to you within the week. This has been Tea on the Films with Emmy Green. My name is Emmy Green, and I love you for listening. Thank you so much. Peace out. This podcast was made using the Anchor app the free podcast platform that anybody can download and anybody can use. Why do they do this? Because they believe that everybody's voice should be heard. It's as simple as that. And I encourage you to make your own podcast. Your voice needs to be heard.